Hello and welcome to the Awaken Feminine Podcast. I'm your host, Kaki Lee, a mindset coach and healer who's on a mission to share the love and wisdom of inspiring women around the world who have gone through adversity and turned their pain into purpose. Today, I am super excited to be interviewing Beck Carlson, a soul-aligned business owner and an intuitive laser coach who is helping people to live a life of profound freedom. Beck and I actually did our coaching certification together. And although we only really connected once during that period together, it was a you know really intimate group and an immense period of growth for all of us. And I fell in love with her bubbly nature as soon as I connected with her way back when. She's a beautiful being inside and out, and I know she has so much love and wisdom to share with us today. Do I have you there, Beck? Yes, you do. Hello. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for joining me on the Awaken Feminine podcast. So before we get started, can you just share with us where you're joining me from? I'm joining you from Melbourne, Australia. I live on the Mornington Peninsula. So I've got beautiful beautiful beaches and wineries on my doorstep. And yeah, it's been a lovely day here today. So jealous. That's a nice part of um, Melbourne, which I actually haven't been to. So when things are open, I would love to visit. (laughs) Yes, you should definitely come down and yes, spend a weekend with me. That would be lovely. That'd be awesome. And you're my first Aussie guest, but I'm super excited as well. (laughs) (laughs) So um, yeah, just really excited for our conversation together. So are you ready to just dive in? Yes, let's go for it. Awesome. So Beck, I know you're passionate about helping people live that life of profound freedom. Can you share with us your journey on why or even maybe the how this has become your passion? Yeah, so basically I've worked in the corporate world um, for most of my life and I'm sort of someone who's very passionate, have a really high work ethic and it really actually started not to serve me um, because I always went the extra mile and was um, going above and beyond and ended up in many situations where I, um, yeah, ended up in roles and managing projects that were highly stressful. And I just got to the point where I was like, this isn't what I want to be doing in life and went on a self-discovery journey and healing journey as well and my I guess my first um, role outside of the corporate world was doing an attraction marketing business and that was really great like I learned so much and I absolutely met some beautiful people and really started get to get into the entrepreneurship world yeah. Um, but then I just discovered I had more to offer. And so, yeah, I've stepped into business coaching and I more work with people who are wanting to align their soul and business. And yeah, it's been an amazing journey and so much fun and growth and yeah, just realizing um, so much of who I am and what I'm here on earth to create and stepping into my mission. So yes, I've now got um, a soul aligned business mastermind where I work with entrepreneurs who are wanting to align their soul and business. And yeah, it's just so much fun. And yeah, I've just loved the journey so much. And I also love working with other beautiful people who are, have been, in the same situation as myself and maybe they're still in the corporate world and you know not sure how to get out of it or wanting change and wanting to find their purpose and yeah I just get so excited and love working with um you know with like-minded people and seeing them succeed as well yeah it's so beautiful and it's just so important to have your soul aligned with well not just your business but with whatever you do so that's really awesome what you're doing so Beck, can you tell me was there a particular event you know I know you said you know you things weren't serving you in the corporate world anymore but was that particular event that you know just was the catalyst where you went right I just can't do this anymore I'm I need to get out and go do you know go do this now yeah I think it was I think I had a quite a few of those moments mm. but 
Um, I really like just didn't know how to shift and how to move out of it. And I went through a process of looking for a different career, like career change and maybe a different industry and that type of thing. But I was just like, none of this is resonating with me. This is not it. This is not it. Um, So it did take me, you know, some time before I found, you know, that's something else. Yeah. But yeah, so there wasn't really a specific moment because there was so many along the way. And, you know, I had history just kept repeating itself where, um, you know, I'd be sent away interstate to work for months on end. And, you know, it would be like a two week thing and turn into three months. And it just, you know, living out of a suitcase for work is the most unattractive thing (laughs) for anyone ever. (laughs) So, um, yeah, it's really not all it's cracked up to be. It's different when you're traveling to beautiful destinations and you can set up your own day and, you know, work from, you know, where you want in your own business. But when you're under the, um, on the clock and pretty much working all the time, it's really not enjoyable. And yeah, there was like many times where I did end up with adrenal fatigue and, you know, you then end up having to repair yourself and build yourself back up again at your own time and cost. And um, it's really just, I think I realised after that happening a few times that it's just not where I wanted to be in life. And yeah, then the self-discovery journey started and I just started you know, connecting more with myself and my soul family and, you know, receiving guidance. Um, And the messages really started coming through thick and fast. And and then it all just started coming together. Even when I started my attraction marketing business, you know, I was in that for a little while and I I thought, I love this. It's amazing. I've learned so much about the online space and the digital marketing world. But I was like, there's still more to come for me. There's still more to come. But, you know, they're the steps you take along along your journey. Yeah, love that. I want to talk more about, you know, you said you were starting to connect and getting, um, you know, guidance. But I want to go back to just ask you this question. You were saying that, you know, it was... um, with your work, things just kind of kept repeating itself. It was like a pattern, you know, you'll be thrown into the same situations over and over again. Do you believe that like the universe, you know, trying to go, Hey, learn this lesson. And you're, you're still like, I'm not learning. until And then until you actually went, hang, hang on, I need to stop doing this. And that's when it stopped. Exactly. And I think, you know, sometimes you have to go through these, hard situations and the universe is putting you in them because they, the universe knows that you're going to come out the other side shining. But, you know, this means that I've learned so much and I've, I've progressed and grown and I've got the tools now to help other people get themselves out of these situations. And that's just, you know, I'm so grateful for my journey and while there's been some dark days and some really hard times, I now reflect and I think, you know, if I hadn't have gone through all of this, I wouldn't have the skills and the mindset and the energy that I have today to be able to help others find freedom with them in themselves as well. So, um, so yeah, it's, um, it's been very, very beautiful journey, ups and downs, (laughs) but very grateful for it. um now and you know for people who are listening to this who's kind of realizing that in this pattern maybe you know it's time to just really kind of look within and go hey hang on what am I supposed to be learning from here so that was you know that just sharing that was really helpful so let's go into your spiritual side of things I'm super interested in how that kind of all developed you said you started getting like messages or guidance so you know, can you just share a little bit about, you know, what was that a spiritual awakening, you know, moment for you? Like, how did it kind of just unfold? Yeah, so I guess I, through my personal development journey, and yeah, sort of that awakening, I, 
you know, started working with different healers and mentors and picking up some different skills, but also on the journey I've learned how to heal myself and take myself through certain processes as well. So, um, and through that, connecting with, with myself and who I am and my soul family, because my soul family are just an extension of, of me. They're just not here on earth. Yeah. Um, they live up in the quantum and, um, you know, every day I'm connecting with them every morning and saying, good morning. What, what do you want me to create today? What's my mission today? Um, and you know, every night thanking them and, you know, asking them to be with me during my sleep and, you know, give me upgrades and, and support, support me with what we're co-creating together. So, and, you know, I think a lot of people get in the beginning when I started going through this connection with my soul family, I, you know, it does take a lot of trust and surrender and, you know, just really, you know, being patient and knowing that, you know, those, messages that come through in the first few seconds that is your guidance that's your soul family anything after that is all in our brain and Mm. that is what does not serve us so um when you really do fully step into that trust and just you know just let yourself go and you know just surrender to everything that is going on in the back of your mind and what you've learned and the way you've been brought up and what you've been told, you really just, you just get this whole different energy and vibration. And honestly, it's for me, co- that co-creation is just beautiful. And, you know, it means in my business, I get so much guidance, um, you know, when I'm thinking, oh, what can I share on my social media? You know, I just tune in and mm-hmm. ask my soul family, you know, what does my marketplace need to hear today? What do my clients need from me? And it's, yeah, it just gives me so much inspiration and encouragement to show up and share more. And it's, yeah, so it's been beautiful. Yeah, coming. I love, I love um, that. I love hearing stories of how, you know, everything started for people with their connections. And, you know, um, I don't know about you, but I'm a very science-based person. I'm a pharmacist, you know, by trade. So all my life is like logic and science, you know, and when, you know, things started, first started for me, it was like, I think I'm going crazy. Oh my goodness, what is happening? <laughs> you know, and, re- you know, as you say, it is really just developing that trust and surrendering and having faith that what the guidance that you're getting is taking you to, you know, what your soul really wants. Exactly. And I think, you know, it can be a bumpy ride and, you know, you are going to have moments of doubt and what am I doing and is this real? But like I said, it's all about that trust and surrender and, you know, just closing off what other people's opinions are, you know, and there are going to be people in your life who when when you start to progress you know you may not resonate with them as much anymore and yeah um you know some of your family may think that you're a little bit crazy but (laughs) it's okay they're allowed to think that and that's that's their stuff that's for them to deal with but um you know just staying true in your you know, in your mission and yeah. what you're here to create, that that is the most important part. Yeah. And, you know, for me, it took a long time to really tell, even, you know, open up to people about it. You know, it is, sometimes it feels like a lonely process, but, you know, when you find that once you start trusting, you start meeting all these people that understand yeah. you and then you it's can have conversations so- like this and not think you're a weirdo. <laughs> that's right. And that's, you know... I mean, I've met so many amazing people in the last sort of three years while I've been on this entrepreneurial journey and, you know, growing and, you know, this connection and I've met the most beautiful people and I would, you know, think that people would think that I've known them for my whole life, you know, but you know, you can connect on a different level to, you know, maybe your childhood family best friends and, yes. and people you went to 
school with and that type of thing. So, yeah, it's so yeah. beautiful, you know, the new connections that you yeah. create on your journey as well. Definitely. So, Beck, having gone through, you know, everything that you've gone through, what's your personal mission? What are you here on this earth to do? Well, I'm here to help people find profound freedom. Um, and to me, um, it's funny, people look at freedom as, a, well, a lot of people look at freedom very differently to the way I do. And that's, you know, sitting on a beach, drinking cocktails, <laughs> you know, buying, you know, the beachfront property and going on these amazing five-star holidays. <clears throat> and while I do love doing those type of things, um, for me, freedom comes from within. And, you know, if I'm here feeling free within myself and with who I am and the mission that I'm on, that is profound freedom to me. And that's what I'm here to support other people with. Um, and I guess an extension of that in my mastermind is, yeah, just helping people move away from the 3D strategies of, you know, the hard and fast sales and marketing um, and really connecting with 5D, five fifth dimensional quantum yeah. strategies in their business. So everything in their business aligns with, with, you know, their mission and not something that potentially, you know, they have, yeah. you know, downloaded off the internet. <laughs> you know, yes. I prefer to work with my downloaded guidance from my soul family. And that way I know that I'm on purpose and I'm on mission when all my strategies align with my brand and my mission. Yeah, I love that. And yeah, freedom does mean different things for so many different people. But, you know, I, I think, you know, you really hit the nail on the head saying that, you know, freedom first has to come from within before you have the freedom on the outside. So yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. So Beck, I want to go even more deep and personal with you if you're up for it. Sure. <laughs> okay. So, you know, you've talked about, you know, how you, you know, developed your passion for helping people create freedom and, you know, um, you know, feeling burnt out from working, things like that um, along your journey. But was there a particular event that, you know, you found to be the most challenging that really led to your biggest breakthrough? I would say my biggest breakthrough was setting boundaries. Um, and after I started doing that in the corporate world, that is when things really started changing for me. It's like almost the biggest lesson that I needed to learn was saying, no, enough's enough. Sorry, guys. You know, yeah, I've already done so much here. This is not what I signed up for. Or, you know, just standing up for myself because at the end of the day, if you don't respect yourself, then other people aren't going to. And, you know, just being able to set those boundaries. And also, when you're running your own business, boundaries are massive. You know, you need to have boundaries with, um, with clients, with, you know, with your time, how you manage your business. And I think that was sort of my biggest biggest lesson and yeah I really truly feel like soon as I started doing that so many things started falling into place for me and yeah. I'd just seen a massive shift within myself and also you know what was showing up for me yeah um so yeah so I think and a lot of us struggle I was chatting to a friend during the week who's <laughs> in the same position that I was um, probably, you know, a couple of years ago. Yeah. And I was like, don't change your job unless you're going to set boundaries in your next yeah. one, because that's, you know, that's gonna happen. downfall yeah. um, is that you're, you're being taken advantage of and, you know, you need to stick up for yourself here. And it doesn't mean that you can't show up and do a great job. You yeah. just need to do it in a respected process. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure like there was quite a lot of events that has happened where you went, oh, you know, oh, I think I need to stick up for myself, but you kind of probably didn't until, you know, something must have like kind of triggered and go, right, 
this is not cool anymore. I need to stand up for myself and set boundaries. Like, was there, you know, a particular thing that really just set you off or, you know, was it just kind of like accumulation of reflecting on everything that was happening from before? Um, there was a bit of like accumulation of reflection, but also I was in a situation where I was working outside of a contract um, and like doing so much extra. And when I asked to one, be rewarded for it and to, um, to have boundaries set around it, I was treated horribly. Like the way that the responses that I got around this were absolutely disgraceful. Yeah. <laughs> and I, um, and yeah, they sent me this, email which half of the points in it were incorrect and untrue so it was about like four weeks later I responded to the email corrected them on everything and I said sorry but the way that this situation has been handled does not align with my values and you have a massive lack of integrity and I can no longer work here yeah. and I was sayonara guys yeah <laughs> Good on you. Um, yeah, so I just, you know, I felt so empowered um, through that experience and, you know, I think they definitely learnt a lot of, <laughs> from it as well Yeah. Um, because, you know, they've really lost, you know, they could have kept me working there and they did approach me um, a few weeks after I'd left to say, mm -hmm. can you come back and talk to us? And I was like, no, sorry. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And thanks for sharing that because I think so many people struggle with setting boundaries, right? I mean, that was something that I had to learn to do as well. And, you know, continuously needing to remind myself that, you know, setting boundaries doesn't mean I'm not caring or I'm, you know, um, I'm a bad person because sometimes, you know, people are like, Hey, you know, come do this. We're like, no, I can't because this is what I need to do now. And that's priority. Like playing is not priority, you know, for me. Like, so it's just so important to set those It's healthy boundaries It's not saying that you don't want to hang out with those people or do things for people, but you need to look after your, your, your things first, and then you can go and help other people because Otherwise, you, they're taking from your cup. And then, you know, exactly. as they say, you can't pour from an empty cup. So it's just important to have those boundaries in. So thanks for sharing that story. No worries. Yeah, yeah and I, I think as well, it's the way that you approach the situation too. You know, if, you know, you've had a really full-on week or you're just needing some space, it can be, look, you know, hey, Kaki, I know we're supposed to go out um on the weekend and have a beautiful dinner however i'm just not you know really feeling like i'm in the right energy but you know can we reschedule at this time yeah. and you know it's i've always found that you know when you're just honest and you're not just straight out cancelling and not making the effort to reschedule yeah. um it's always received and you get so much love back in yeah. that um in that scenario as well so yes. you know it really does it makes for the time that you, when you do catch up, um, so much more beautiful because you've both got amazing energy to have an awesome catch up and, um, and share with each other. So I think yeah. it's, um, you know, it doesn't just have to be, you know, a no show or, yes. you know, cancelling it's, um, you know, respecting yourself but also the other person yeah, as well exactly and if the other person gets angry it might be time to really look at you know that relationship right because they obviously don't respect you either because they're thinking all about themselves yeah exactly yeah Definitely. so Beck, you know with everything that you've gone through can you share with us some of the tools or teachers that were really helpful in your healing process so um i guess I've done like a lot of kinesiology and energy healing and um, those have been really supportive for me, especially when I was still, um, you know, in those corporate jobs that were pulling my energy down and, um, you know, it really just helped to keep me, you know, just keep me afloat and keep me going because look, at the end of the day, 
we all still need an income to live and it's totally okay for you to be launching a business and starting a business while you're still working full time yes. because ultimately if you um you know leave a job or you don't have an income it's really going to be hard for you to run a business and feel abundant because if you've got no money you're going to be coming from a place of scarcity and you just you know you're not going to be attractive to any of your marketplace and get clients when you come from that yeah. from that space so I think it's um you know so it's really important for you for people to sort of you know just get the support you need and appreciate that income and support mm. that you're receiving so you can start your business yeah so yeah. yeah so it was a lot of um yeah for me kinesiology and energy healing I really um you know I still you know, I don't think I'll ever stop yeah. using those type of support networks. Um, and also along the way in my attraction marketing business, there was, you know, so many leaders and so much I learned from that industry. And mm. a lot of it, I think in the beginning, it was so fun and exciting and it was a whole new world to me. Yeah. And you know, there's a the way that that industry works is not always really resonant with me. So now I have a different way of doing it. And, you know, that's really beautiful. But I just, I mean, what I learned and the training I received was really invaluable, you know, for kicking off my, my journey. Yeah. Um, and then I've also worked with a business coach for about 15 months. Um, I've just finished up that container and also going through a coaching yeah. accreditation with yourself yeah. as well. So, um, yeah, so they're sort of been my support and my yeah. growth and yeah, just learning and yeah. having so much fun and connecting with beautiful people as well so I've made some beautiful friendships and you know those friendships as well really help you grow and challenge yourself and you yeah. know having people to bounce ideas yeah. off and okay look I'm struggling a bit with this and you know they've probably been through it as well or have you know some tips to try and help you move through too so exactly. so that's that's beautiful as well I think beautiful I'm a book reader, Beck. So is there a particular book that changed your life? Look, I'm not, <laughs> reader, to be honest, I still, um, I do really like Rebecca Campbell's book. Um, I think it's light is the new black. Yeah. 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 Um, I've read that this year. That was just like, it just, for me, that book, it's like, you know, really people that are going on a spiritual journey and, you know, that a lot of that book for me confirmed the journey I was on. I feel like yeah. I've already kind of gone through it, but it was so beautiful to read. And I really would recommend um, yeah. Rebecca's books. And I know she does have another one out, which, I am interested to read. Um, yeah. I do more read when I travel um, yeah. and currently I can't leave my postcode. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, So yeah, that would probably be my book because it is, um, I think it is a beautiful supportive book for people on, on a spiritual journey yeah. and just get yeah, wanting to understand and learn more about, about that connection. Yeah. It's funny. Um, you know, so far when I've been interviewing people, the books that they, you know, they say that changed their life. Um, I've either read them and, you know, they've made a big impact in my life or is a book that I've seen in a bookstore where I'm like, Oh, this is really interesting but I haven't actually bought it or read it. And then they'll say, you know, they tell me that's, you know, that's the book that changed the life. I'm like, okay, that there's, there's, you know, something going on here. Yes. Yeah. And I think as well, like I'm more, I, I've tried to read it through a few like strategy 
type of books, but they just don't get me. I don't resonate with them. And I think it's more because I'm more 80%, you know, vibration and, you know, seeking that guidance and connection with soul family than, you know, and the strategy is just a 20%, 20% are really for me. So, so those, those sort of books are not, um, I do have another book on my shelf to read actually. And I'm like, I've got us. Um, I always have that as a goal to read a few books a year, but I'm not very um, diligent with that. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> but you know, you gave me a book, so that's good, and it's actually a book that I was looking at. So now I'm going to go and find and read, find it and read it, <laughs> and buy it. So Beck, I know, like right now, I mean, as you say, you can't leave your postcode. So there's a lot of change happening in the world, and people are navigating change, and you know, the buzzword is pivoting, and you know changing how they work and how they live and all those kind of things and there's also a lot of people awakening at this time and starting their journey so what advice or recommendations do you would you have for those people to get rid of any limiting beliefs or you know fear that is holding them back from even taking that first step so look i think yeah with all the change happening in the world at the moment um you can really get caught up going down a rabbit hole with so much but I think um really just finding that connection with yourself and taking time to go out in nature and you know I've been down to the beach today and just had my shoes off and my feet in the sand and I've really been making an effort to try and do that three or four times a week um you know I'm only a kilometer away from the beach and you know it's just so beautiful for me to have that but you know, also sometimes if, you know, for some reason I can't get down there or it's really, it's raining or something, I'll, you know, just go out to my backyard and just, you know, put my hand on a tree and, you know, just take some deep breaths and just really connect with mother nature. And, you know, so I think it's really important at the moment just to really try and stay connected and, and true to yourself. Mm. Um, but if you are sort of, you know, on that awakening journey and you're wanting to learn more and just, you know, progress and you're a bit like, oh, I don't really know where to go, I think just reach out to people that you see are are already, you know, really spiritual connected or on the journey that you want to be on and connect with them and ask them for some support or, you know, do they know any good, you know, podcasts or people for the, you to follow on social media. Mm-hmm. And I think that's just really a great way to, you know, just start to progress your journey by just connecting and I guess, yeah, doing a little bit of, networking and just Mm. you know finding a supportive group who are you know on the same mission as you and then I find from that space you'll start to evolve yourself um you know when you're surrounded with like-minded people it's much easier for you to progress and grow than if you're still spending time with people who are not on the same journey as you doesn't mean that you can't be friends with them and connect with them, but you want to really find your comfortable space where, you know, you can open up and you can be yourself and, you know, and, and progress. Like it's okay to be like, Oh, you know, um, I don't really understand this or that type of thing. Cause you're in a beautiful supported network where, everyone's already been through the same journey so it's yeah. it's totally okay um yeah. so yeah I would start with you know yeah we yeah, would just with that connection and reaching out and asking any questions or you know seeking support and you might find some people that you might want to work with to help you either find your mission or progress your mission or yeah. um and I think that's what is probably the best starting place for for people that are heading into the 
beautiful amazing spiritual awakening yeah that's awesome advice and it is so true finding that like-minded community or people that have gone on a journey to have that support system for you is so important because it does it, it can get really lonely and scary if you don't have them so yeah that's great advice so Beck, I'm going to take a bit of a turn now. So I am all about self-love because that was, you know, one of the biggest lessons that I had to learn on my journey because, because I didn't love myself. You know, I just really <laughs> hit rock bottom and, you know, was a bit of a mess. So self-love is very, for me, very important for, I think, for everyone. So, you know, with you being a busy entrepreneur, you know, running your own business, what are your top three things that you really love to do to just give yourself that self-love and self-care? So I, like I said before, I love the beach and nature and just connecting with, um, with Mama Earth. So, you know, I'm always, yeah, just making sure that I am, am in that connection and, soon as I feel like I've had a bit of a busy day or even if I've like, oh, you know, I've got quite a bit on today, I'll, you know, make sure that I do connect and, you know, give myself that beautiful nurturing just time out. And, you know, even if you just sit on the beach for 10 minutes, it doesn't have to be, you know, a lengthy process or, you know, two minutes, you know, out the front, just with your shoes off connecting. Um, with the mother nature or earth and you know also you know if you don't if you can't get to some grass or whatever then you know hug a tree basically that's what tree <laughs> hugging is all about connection <laughs> with mother nature <laughs> it's funny that term um you know just hug a tree like all those years i was like my god <laughs> there's people hugging trees and now i'm like okay i'm a tree hugger <laughs> yeah, it's like yes find me a tree <laughs> So number one would be, yeah, just connecting with Mother Nature. Secondly, I love to just, just do whatever I need for the day. So if that's have a bath, have a glass of wine and just have some music on or do some cooking or what, like what fills your cup? What, you know, that life force energy that, can often be sucked out of us from, you know, whether you've got a job or kids and you're running them around or you've got, you know, things going on. Just, you know, what do you love that you can do by yourself, for yourself and make sure that, you know, you do schedule that into your, to your week and, and do whatever just, you know, you, helps you to relax and connect with yourself and just be, you know, yeah. I think it's really, um, you know, so many of us don't do enough of that, especially, you know, mums with kids and families and, you know, <laughs> me. <laughs> um, so finding that whatever it is for you, whether it's, um, you know, getting out in the garden or, you know, if there's some arts and crafts that you love to do or, you know, I've, um, you know, there's so many things that, yeah. that you could do to do that, whatever resonates for you. And I think that's beautiful. And my third one um, would be probably just journaling and doing a bit of that self-love work um, because... I think we all, males and females, go through this journey of, you know, we need to love ourselves yeah. more than we do and appreciate who we are, our journey, our achievements, and, you know, just celebrate yourself. And I do, for, I do find that, um, you know, when I'm journaling and I'll, you know, just really connect with certain things that have happened. And I do like that writing, writing it out process because I do feel like it really cements it into reality that, um, you know, the appreciation that you can have for yeah. yourself and whether you, you, you know, a lot of people use journaling for so many different things. And I think, 
you know, sometimes I'll, you know, write out 10 things that I love about myself and 10 things that I've achieved this week and, you know, and things like that. I think it's just, it can really give us a, um, a reality check on how amazing we are and because we are all so amazing and you know yeah there's times where we all need reminding of that and that's okay but as long as we're doing it then that's the main thing yes really you know really finding that love for yourself is so important because um yeah when you don't you just find that things are a lot harder, you know, there's, I think, I can't remember the exact quote, but it was something along the lines of love yourself first and then everything else will fall into place. And it is, you know, such a true, you know, such truth, you know, behind that. So Beck, I really love, you know, what you have to offer to the world right now. I really just want to find out, you know, what it is that is really setting your soul on fire. What's setting my soul on fire right now is just the connections that I've been making recently. And I just, I love connecting with people. I've always, always been someone who is the first that first one there to help people. And um, now I've met so many amazing people that I get to have that beautiful flow of helping others and receiving help from other people from myself and yeah, yeah I, I've just been really loving connections and people reaching out to me and um, yeah I think that's just really what's lighting me up at the moment. Yeah I love that and yeah as you say well, I think once you know you are so aligned all the right people the beautiful people just come into your life and those connections are just you know so precious and invaluable yeah so i love that thank you beck so thank you so much for sharing your love and wisdom with us today if people want to find out more about you and how they can work with you where should they go so you can find me i love to hang out on instagram um beck.v.carlson um, or you can email me at hello at Beck, B-E-C-K-V Carlson, C-A-R-L-S-O-N, and also Beck V. Carlson on Facebook as well. Awesome. I'll have all your details and any recommended resources available in the show notes so people can reach out to you. Thank you again, beautiful, for your time and wisdom today. Thank you so much for having me and um, yeah, I'm loving watching your journey um, as well. So thank you so much for having me and yeah, to everyone listening, I um, yeah, sending you all so much love and yeah, I look forward to seeing the show come out. Yes. Thank you. Uh, You know, and until next time, I love you guys. I believe in you and you are worth taking that first step to the life of your dreams. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone.